हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स ऑन लिमिट एंड कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ ए फंक्शन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस द डेफिनेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूस फंक्शन सो इफ इफ द फंक्शन एफ इज कंटिन्यूस एट सम पॉइंट ए बी देन बाय द डेफिनेशन लिमिट ऑफ एफ एक्स वाई एज एक्स वाई अप्रोच इज दैट पॉइंट ए बी must be equal to value of the function at that point a b so using this uh, definition if we know that the function is continuous at that point at which we want to evaluate the limits so if the function is continuous at the point a b then the value of this limit must be equal to value of the function f at that point ab so this is helpful in evaluating limits of continuous functions if we know that the function given is continuous at a point at which we want to evaluate limit then the value of limit can be directly obtained by taking x equal to a and y equal to b in the given function so we we use this uh, note to evaluate some limits suppose we start with this limit limit of x minus xy plus 3 over x square y plus 5xy minus y cube as xy tends to order pair 0 1 so it is clear that this is a rational function and we know that rational function is continuous at every point at which this denominator is non zero so and we want to find out limit at point 0 1 so we can check whether this denominator is zero or non zero at this point so for that we put x equal to 0 and y equal to 1 and we obtain that the value of this denominator at point 0 1 is 0 plus 0 minus 1 which is equal to minus 1 which is non zero that means this rational function is continuous at point 0 1 so because it is continuous at this point 0 1 the value of this limit can be obtained directly by putting this point order pair 0 1 into this function so we find out limit of this rational function by taking x equal to 0 and y equal to 1 directly in this function so if we take x equal to 0 y equal to 1 we have 0 minus 0 because there is a x here plus 3 over due to x square this will be 0 Plus 5xy that is 5 into 0 into 1 which is also 0 minus y equal to 1 so 1 cube is 1 so we obtain minus 3 as the limit <coughs> so in this way if we know that the function given function is continuous at a given point then the limit can be obtained directly by plugging into that point in the given function we consider one more example limit of x square minus xy over square root of x minus square root of y so we know that x square minus xy is continuous at every point similarly square root of x minus square root of y is also continuous at every point now this function is undefined if we consider under root x equal to under root y because if this is zero then this function is undefined so if this is zero then we have square root of x equal to square root of y that is either y equal to x or y equal to plus or minus x so this function is continuous at every point xy for which y is not equal to 
plus or minus x because at this type of points this denominator becomes zero therefore it is not continuous at this type of points so uh, we uh, we see that at this point zero zero uh, we have x equal to y so uh, we cannot put x equal to 0 y equal to 0 directly here if we put x equal to 0 y equal to 0 uh, we will have 0 by 0 form which is indeterminate form so what we can do is we can take x common here we try to simplify this so if we take x common we have x times x minus y now this x and y can be written as square root of x square minus square root of y square and if we simplify this using the formula a square minus b square we can rewrite this as square root of x minus square root of y into square root of x plus square root of y so now we can cancel out this because square root of x is not equal to square root of y because this uh, y equal to x is not in the domain of the given function therefore we can cancel out this factor and we are left with x times square root of x plus square root of y and if we take x equal to 0 y equal to 0 we have 0 so in this way here we have written we can cancel out the factor square root of x minus square root of y because the path y equal to x is not in the domain of the function okay, this function is undefined if y equal to x so this type of points are not in the domain of this function another example limit of x minus y over x square minus y square here also if we put x equal to 1 y equal to 1 directly we will have 0 by 0 form so we try to cancel out common factors if possible so this x square minus y square can be written as x minus y times x plus y and so that x minus y will cancel out and here also this is rational function and it is undefined if y square minus x square equal to 0 that is it is undefined if x equal to y so x is not equal to y therefore x minus y is not equal to 0 because y equal to x is not in the domain of this function therefore we can cancel out x minus y and we are left with 1 over x plus y so if you put x equal to 1 y equal to 1 we have 1 half so in this way if we are having the knowledge about continuous function uh, we can find out limits easily if the function given is continuous at a given point at which we want to find out limit now another type is evaluation of limits using polar coordinates so we are already familiar with polar coordinates we know how to convert cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates so suppose we have this point order pair x y in the x y plane then suppose this o p denotes the denotes the position vector of this point x y and suppose angle made by this vector o p with positive x axis is say theta and if we complete this right angle triangle o a p then uh, we know that cosine of theta is nothing but x divided by length of AP OP suppose it is R and similarly sine theta is AP that is y over length of OP which is R so from this we can write x equal to R cos theta and y equal to R sine theta and from this triangle we can see r square is x square plus y square because it is right angle triangle or if we square this x and y 
then also we will obtain r square equal to x square plus y square and if we take y over x we will have tan theta so this is the relationship between cartesian and polar coordinates these r and theta are known as polar coordinates so sometimes if we are not comfortable with cartesian coordinates then we can convert cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates using these two relations and uh, we can sometimes easily find out the limits using polar coordinates so that will depend on the given problem whether we have to use cartesian or polar coordinates but sometimes limit can be evaluated easily by changing cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates now if we are having limit of uh, if we are having limit x y as going to origin if we are interested in the limit of given function as x y approaches origin then suppose x y is somewhere here then this is nothing but small r so whenever x y is approaching origin x square plus y square will also approach origin and we know that x square plus y square is nothing but r square that is we can replace this x y tending to 0 0 by r tending to 0 uh, because uh, we uh, suppose we are approaching from this side and suppose this is small r so there are different ways to approach from different directions but whenever we are going near to zero this distance is going near to zero distance becomes small the the angle theta is not becoming small suppose i am measuring from this this will be the angle suppose i am measuring from here then this will be the angle theta similarly for this this will be the angle theta so when x y is approaching 0 0 r will approach 0 so x y tending to 0 0 can be equivalently replaced by r tending to 0 when we convert cartesian limits into polar limits we consider this example find limit of 2 x y over x square plus y square as x y approaches 0 0 if exist this we can uh, do using cartesian coordinates also uh, we have seen this type of problems here if we take y equal to mx uh, then uh, you can see the answer will depend on m and limit does not exist but that we decide by polar coordinates so we start by taking x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta then r square is x square plus y square as we discuss so x y tending to 0 0 can be replaced by r tending to 0 and we replace x by r cos theta y by r sin theta so this will be converted into 2 r square cos theta sin theta and x square plus y square is replaced by r square and because r is non-zero r square is also non-zero so we can cancel out r square because r is going near to zero but r, but r will never be equal to zero so we can cancel out r and we are left with limit of 2 cos theta into sin theta as r tends to zero now this is independent of r so limit is 2 cos theta sin theta so here the answer of limit depends on the value of theta so for different theta uh, we can check whether limit remains same or not suppose we approach origin along this uh, positive x-axis then we know that along positive x-axis theta is 0 so 
so if we take limit along positive x axis or along the line theta equal to 0 then this limit will become 0 so limit becomes 0 along positive x axis suppose we try to find out limit along the line y equal to x so the line y equal to x it can be written in polar form as theta equal to pi by 4 so if you put y equal to r sin theta and x equal to r cos theta uh, we have sin theta equal to cos theta so the possible value of theta is pi by 4 so the polar form of the line y equal to x is theta equal to pi by 4 so if we consider limit along this line theta equal to pi by 4 then if we put theta equal to pi by 4 the limit will be 2 cos pi by 4 times sin pi by 4 and this is nothing but 2 times 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 which is 1 so limit along the line theta equal to pi by 4 is 1 and limit along the line theta equal to 0 is 0 this means that approaching from different angles lead to different answers so whenever limit depends on theta we can say that for different values of theta we will have different limits so therefore the limit does not exist in this case limit of 2xy over x plus y square does not exist as xy approaches origin we consider one more example limit of x cube over x square plus y square as xy approaches 0 0 so here also we use polar coordinates we take x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta so that r square is x square plus y square and if we substitute uh, this this we can replace by r tending to 0 x is r cos theta so r cube cos cube theta and x square plus y square is r square again we can cancel out r square because r is non-zero so there will be r here so limit r tending to 0 r times cos cube theta now here to evaluate this limit we can use sandwich theorem now we know that cosine theta is always in between minus 1 and 1 for all theta so if we take cube of cosine theta then we have minus 1 cube which is minus 1 less than or equal to cos cube theta less than or equal to 1 cube which is 1 so this is true for all theta here we require r times cos cube theta so we multiply this inequality by r and we obtain minus r less than or equal to r times cos cube theta less than or equal to r now limit of minus r as r tends to 0 is 0 similarly limit of r as r tends to 0 is also 0 so by sandwich theorem limit of r cos cube theta as r tends to 0 is also 0 by sandwich theorem so this says that this limit is 0 so limit exists and value of the limit is 0 so sometimes polar coordinates are useful to decide some time some type of limits next question discuss the continuity of the function x cube minus y cube over x square plus y square whenever x y is different from origin and 0 whenever x y is equal to origin now here function is different for non-zero points and it is different at origin so we have to consider two cases first case is whenever points are different from origin and then the continuity at origin 
so if we take x y different from origin then our function is x cube minus y cube over x square plus y square and this is rational function and it is defined at every point except 0 0 it is undefined at 0 0 but we are talking about non-zero points so this function is defined at every non-zero point and because it is a rational function we know that rational function is continuous at every point at which it is defined therefore because this is a rational function it is continuous at every non-zero point so we can write the function fxy equal to x cube minus y cube over x square plus y square is a rational function with domain r2 minus origin r2 means xy plane so it is a rational function with domain the set of all points in the plane which are different from origin so we know that rational function is continuous at every point at which it is defined and this rational function is defined at every non-zero point therefore it is continuous at every non-zero point now we discuss the continuity at origin so if we have if x y is equal to origin then value of function is zero so first condition for continuity is satisfied function is defined at origin given that value of function at origin is zero that means f is defined at origin now we have to decide the limit of this function as x y approaches 0 0 so here also we use polar coordinates so now we check whether this limit exists or not so for that we start by taking x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta and this will be equivalent to r tending to 0 x is r cos theta so it is r cube cos cube theta y is r sin theta so minus r cube sin cube theta and x square plus y square is r square so we can take r cube common here and we are left with cos cube theta minus sin cube theta so this is equivalent to r square will cancel out and there will be r left so limit r times cos cube theta minus sin cube theta now as we know that cos cube theta minus sin cube theta absolute value of cos cube theta minus sin cube theta is less than or equal to absolute value of cos cube theta plus absolute value of sin cube theta and absolute value of cos cube theta is always less than or equal to 1 same thing for this which is also less than or equal to 1 so we obtain that absolute value of cos cube theta minus sin cube theta is less than or equal to 1 plus 1 that is 2 times for all theta and this we can rewrite as minus 2 less than or equal to cos cube theta minus sin cube theta less than or equal to 2 now here with this cos cube theta minus sin cube theta we have small r so we multiply this inequality by small r so we have minus 2 r less than or equal to r times cos cube theta minus sin cube theta less than or equal to 2 r now limit of this 2 r as r tends to 0 is 0 this is also 0 as r, r tends to 0 therefore by sandwich theorem this limit is also 0 as r tends to 0 so we have written here since limit of minus 2r equal to limit of 2r is 0 we get this limit to be 0 by sandwich theorem so therefore limit of fxy as xy tends to 0 0 is 0 and 0 is nothing but value of given function at 0 0 so therefore limit of fxy as xy tends to 0 0 exists and it is equal to the value of function at 0 0 
here we have to write this is equal to f of 0 0 so therefore f is continuous at origin and we have shown that f is continuous at every non-zero point in the first case and it is continuous at origin also therefore f is continuous at every point in the plane uh, we have some more examples also limit of x square plus y square times sine of 1 upon x square plus y square as x y tending to origin if exist so whenever we have this type of terms x square plus y square it is advisable to use polar coordinates so we start with x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta and we can replace x square plus y square by r square so this is going to be limit r tending to 0 r square sine of 1 over r square now we know that this function is always bounded its value is always in between minus 1 and 1 so minus 1 less than or equal to sine 1 over r square less than or equal to 1 and we have to multiply this inequality by r square so we obtain minus r square less than or equal to r square sine 1 over r square less than or equal to r square now limit of r square is 0 here also 0 so by sandwich theorem limit of this function is also 0 and then finally we replace r square by x square plus y square so this is what we tried to prove next example limit x y tending to 0 0 x y x square minus y square over x square plus y square so here also we can write we start with x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta then x square plus y square is r square now limit x y tending to 0 0 x y times x square minus y square over x square plus y square so this is going to be limit r tending to 0 here x is r cos theta y is r sin theta so we can write r square times cos theta into sin theta same thing here x is r cos theta y is r sin theta so r square cos square theta minus r square sin square theta and we take r square common and we directly write cos square theta minus sin square theta and here we have x square plus y square is r square so you can see r square can be cancelled out so 1 r square will cancel out and we have r square cos theta sin theta into cos square theta minus sin square theta now if you recall this is nothing but uh, we know that 2 sin theta cos theta equal to sin 2 theta so we can write cos theta sin theta equal to sin 2 theta over 2 sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta so therefore cos theta sin theta is sin 2 theta divided by 2 and this is nothing but cos to minus sin square theta r tending r square 4 2 sin 2 theta into 
limit r tending to 0 r square by 4 sin 4 theta now we know that sin 4 theta is bounded function so that is also creating no problem we know that minus 1 less than or equal to sin 4 theta less than or equal to 1 so therefore we multiply this whole equation by r square by 4 minus r square by 4 less than or equal to r square sin 4 theta by 4 less than or equal to r square by 4 and we know that this uh, r square by 4 tending to 0 as r tends to 0 this is also tending to 0 as r tends to 0 so therefore by sandwich theorem this whole limit is 0 so limit of r square sin 4 theta over 4 is 0 so in this way uh, we can sometimes find out limits using polar coordinates also so i hope you like this lecture thank you very much